That is, is accurate, Your Honor. Uh, I'm just trying to be kind of shorthand, but I don't want to be inaccurate. So. Well, Your Honor, um, the law uh, may stand. Make you wish. Um, Certainly not required and not usually, but. I think it's better that way. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the law provides a uh, certain process that is due uh, law enforcement officers, specifically in Chapter 112 for statutes. Uh, Mr. Gardner uh, is a law enforcement officer uh, the Wish County uh, Beach Patrol, as I said in the paper today, they're, they're both law enforcement officers and whatever else they do there. Sure. And that has not been in dispute, it may be now, but throughout the investigation they have been, they've acknowledged that those rights set forth in the police officers and law enforcement officers bill of rights apply now as you see from as you would see if you got to exhibit 33 i believe of the petition i did i know well we, we said and i'll tell you about it then um, uh, we served pursuant to section 112 534 um, a, a written notice of violations um, on december 21st this most recent december 21st um, and pursuant, uh, and when what it did, and, and it set forth a multitude of violations of our clients' rights that have been going on throughout this entire process. They, they simply put, trampled his rights whenever they felt like it throughout this entire process, and we explained every single one of those violations. We put them on written notice pursuant to the statute on December 21st. It's a big stack. Um, now, the petition itself, have you read, not the exhibits, but the petition itself, Your Honor? Okay. Well, the petition covers all of the same violations that are in the 1221 written notice violations, except it also contains, at the very end, right before count one, the additional violations that we learned of on Tuesday of this week, earlier the same day that we filed the petition with the notice of dismissal. And we can get into the weeds on other sections of Law Enforcement Bill of Rights, but by right, way of preview. But, but it appears to me that what you are requesting in this temporary injunction and permanent injunction is uh, the, the relief that you're uh, so you're, uh, requesting, demanding, is, let's read it, shall we? We, we would uh, like you to enjoin them to perform their duties as required under the law, specifically Section 112, 534, Florida Statute, Your Honor. That's specifically that's to conduct a compliance review hearing uh, concerning these alleged intentional violations the ones of in, Captain Gardner's rights. The ones in the 1221 notice, as well as the additional ones that came to light this week that we provided them written notice of in the form of the petition. Right. Now, is Captain Gardner uh, employed uh, with the uh, with the county of Volusia, or the, uh, wh wh who was his employer? County of Volusia. County of Volusia. Is he uh, does he remain employed with the county of Volusia as we speak? That remains to be seen, Your Honor. We have seven days left under the Volusia County's Merit System Rules and Regulations to provide an appeal of the notice of dismissal that was issued on Tuesday. We didn't see that coming because under the law, they were first required before they do that. This is Section One Twelve Point Five Thirty Two. After they reopened their investigation, which is evidenced by a letter and their own admissions, uh, but evidenced by a letter uh, from uh, Mike Coffin dated August, or, I'm sorry, October 25th, it's one of the exhibits. They reopened the investigation. And after they had concluded it, they had an IA report, they did a notice of dismissal on October 18th uh, that I responded to, or we responded to on October 24th. And then October 25th, he reopens the investigation. They conduct a whole bunch of other interviews and other stuff. And, um, and, and okay. Uh, and so, what they were required to do under Section 112.532 at the conclusion of the reopened investigation was to issue an internal affairs report that set forth the additional evidence and findings of this reopened investigation, and then issue also pursuant to Florida law clear rights, clear procedure under Florida law for my client and any but him too if they, you know, if they want to fire him. All law enforcement officers and by the way correctional officers which has nothing to do with this here. Um, they were required to issue a new notice of intent to dismiss. That's what we expected when they called our client on Tuesday to go to come in and meet them. We figured they would follow at least that part of the law because they did that the first time. They did give us a notice of intent to dismiss the first time. And, and the notice of intent should have had attached to it the IA report that they were required, clearly required, to prepare under Florida law. But knowing, and, and, I, and I'd already draft, started drafting this petition. I didn't draft this 22-page document in four hours on Tuesday. I had been working on that. Um, 
and I, and I wanted to see what their notice of intent to dismiss that they were required to provide my client said. But instead, what they did, Your Honor, was they skipped that required step. They skipped the a second IA report and went straight to a notice of dismissal. So what they're obviously trying to do is avoid the unpleasantness of having to go through a compliance review hearing to consider for that for that that panel to consider the multitude of violations of my client's rights that, that have been going on all along. They're set forth in the 1221 written notice of violations pursuant to the statute, as well, I'm sorry, not for the court, as well as the, uh, the additional violations that I just explained to you regarding the notice of dismissal. It itself is another violation. It says skip two steps. And they obviously did that so they could come in here and argue to your honor that these three new wrongs somehow make the multitude of wrongs set forth in the 1221 written notice of violations right. And we're, we're staying here in court equity. Obviously, that's, that can't be the case. I'm sorry, what day did they purport to dismiss it? Tuesday, same day I filed this petition. Was it after you filed it or before? They filed it. Not, they, I they think they gave it to them at 9 o'clock in the morning. I did not. I had to and update. What, the, and what time did you file the petition? After I got done updating the petition with the paragraphs immediately preceding count one that took into account the new violations that were evidenced by the notice of dismissal at 9 o'clock earlier that day. Had you filed this action, before they called him in and purported to dismiss No, I, not, like I said, I had to revise, update the complaint after they fired him to take into account those three additional new violations of law. But, but the, the, the case law is clear, Your Honor. You can you can include it. If you, look, you get the compliance review uh, hearing upon written notice, three working days written notice of any violation on the part. That includes the three violations that were we came to light Tuesday morning, same day I filed the right, petition. But, but I'm still struggling. You just have to forgive me and bear with me a little bit. I understand you. I, just, you I jumped off right on you. I get it. I'm not. Uh, in my previous life, I did not represent officers in these matters, nor did I represent the county in these matters or any other uh, governmental entity. So this is uh, uh, not something that I've dealt with day to day. Is the is the idea of this statute 112.534 to make sure that there is not some kind of biased investigator who is intentionally violating the officer's rights? That's part of it. Of course, it doesn't have to be biased investigator. I mean, if any intent it affords procedural due process to law enforcement and correctional officers, and well, there's a whole bunch of but, but specifically this this part of it, with respect to the investigator who's investigating the officer, is that it? It's not just the investigator, no. If you read the statute, Your Honor, it speaks to the agency uh, as well, investigators and the agency. Yes, but and it I'm looking at subsection G. What, what, what's, and it what's says, if the alleged violation is sustained, this is 112.534G. Okay. If the alleged violation is sustained as intentional, by the compliance review panel, the agency head shall immediately remove the investigator from any further involved, uh, involvement with the investigation of the officer. Additionally, the agency head shall direct an investigation of the initiated against the investigator, determined to have intentionally violated the requirements provided under this part. Uh, and uh, the sustained allegations, now I'm skipping and paraphrasing, against the investigator shall be forwarded to the Criminal Justice Standards and Training Commission uh, for review as an act of official misconduct. So it, it, when I read that, it appeared to me that the purpose, uh, the underlying purpose of this uh, compliance review panel is to, uh, the statutory scheme is, is designed to for a process to remove an investigator, I called it bias, but for whatever reason, who is acting inappropriate. Among other things, it can result, in, look, at 2A, all the provisions of section 838.022, that's the official misconduct criminal code section. Your Honor, that all applies to this part too. That's within the purview of the compliance review board here. But the evidence and the violations and intention, intentionality of all of that, that is the purview of the compliance review board here. By statute, right. they have jurisdiction. All we're asking you to do is to do, is require them to do what the statute says they must do. Section 112.534. Where there's an ongoing investigation. Subparagraph 1D. Where there is an and there ongoing. there was on December 21st. Can you let me finish and then you can. Where there is an ongoing. I, see, 
I have the bigger chair. I understand.